Hello, YouTubers. This is Prophet Tammy Collins, and I'm back again. It's been a minute, uh, briefly. Um, I have a little technical, technical difficulties, but I'm back. And I like to uh, go into a little bit more prophetic, biblical teaching today um, on keeping covenants, the holy days, God's master plan, and the holy calendar. The original holy calendar these these shall i say these covenants and holy days according to the calendar are biblical and as i'm coming into revelation on how the days are sacred to god and they are doc put it this way they are documented in heaven that we are to those who be in christ follow these days. There are sacred meanings behind these days. I'm going to get into the teaching on why we should reserve them and what the significance of them really mean and why God has left them for us to follow them forever. So as I reprogram myself from the pagan calendar, I'm just going to put it the way it is, to the holy Hebrew Jewish calendar, which is the original days is what God is wants us to follow those who are being Christ, those who are his children, those who are part of his kingdom are to reserve these days. Okay, so I'm going to follow with scripture with it, and I'm going to get into uh, why these days are there, why they are, are set for us to reserve them, and how it matters to God, whether we do or don't, um, and the significance of them if we don't. And you know, in my ignorance, you know, custom-wise, brought up a certain way to reserve certain days is what I was taught. But now that I'm being more knowledgeable of my spiritual relationship with Christ and the things he expects me to acknowledge and follow and reserve forever as being his child in his kingdom, these days are very important to him and his children and his believers. We should reserve these days. Okay. I'm going to start off with a prayer, and then I'm going to go into the teaching. Father God, I come before you now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you for the revelation of the holy calendar, according to the book of Jubilee, which is the Hebrew calendar, the original Hebrew calendar. Father, thank you for the revelation and the knowledge and the understanding and the significance. May those who have ears to hear and eyes to see understand the, the reality and significance and importance of these days. Give them understanding and revelation as you have done me. Bless them, Father. Protect them. Cover them in their comings and goings. Bless their families. Bless the works of their hands. Bless their jobs and businesses. Restore them, Lord. We are still in trying times. Continue, Father, to watch over them and count your angels around them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Okay. I'm going to start and move forward. Okay, and um, the topic of my teaching today is keeping covenants and God's master plan, holy his holy calendar. The scripture reading is according to Leviticus 23 and 5. I'm going to highlight on some scripture and some I'm just going to bring, bring, bring in the synopsis of why the holy days are set. They are biblical and it is important that we reserve these days for our own benefit. And... Um, you know, when you're knowledgeable, you 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 do the you follow along with what thus said the Lord. But when you're ignorant of customs that are set in place and you don't reserve them, then he expects, you know, you know, he expects us to investigate and look in it for ourselves, which is what the Holy Spirit has led me to do. So I'm gonna go into the Passover. The Hebrew Passover, basically um blood placed on the door now, you know as we know this one the children of israel when they came through when they were in egypt in bondage the death angel passed over them because the egyptians were being judged they were under the plagues god released 10 plagues in egypt and he reserved and protected the israelites as a significant sign once they anointed their doorposts as a sign that they would, the death angel would pass over them because the firstborn was being taken from the Egyptians. God sent out a 10th plague, was the firstborn of the Egyptians 
uh, children was to be taken. So to protect the Israelites, his people, they were shown a sign as a death angel passed over as a significance. You put blood over the doorposts of your house, the corners of the house. And when the slain, the Egyptians of the firstborn took place, according to Leviticus 23 and 5, the, the Israelites were protected. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. A feast of unleavened bread. A seven-day feast during which the, the, the leavening, leaving out of such yeast out of your home, which caused the bread to rise when baking, was done away with. And I was in a, a seven-day reserving um, you put out of the dwellings of your house any type of yeast, and it was not eaten for seven whole days, according to Leviticus 23 and 14. Okay, that is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay, let's go down to the day of Pentecost. A day of celebrating the gathering in the first and small of the two annual harvests. Observe 50 days from a fixed point in the previous feast. Leviticus 23.15 states the day of Pentecost. Now, I'm going to uh, highlight on the next one. I'll bring in scripture on the next one, which is the Feast of Trumpets called Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah was reserved by the Hebrew the Jews, Hebrew Jews, a day of rejoicing, a mark of blowing of trumpets. The trumpets were brought in as a significant of a feast, of a party, of a celebration, celebration, shall I say. And I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to open up Leviticus 20, 23 and 25, and that will highlight on the Feast of Trumpets and why... God put it there for us to reserve it. Um, let's go on down to Leviticus. Old Testament book. We have a King James or NIV Bible that will work. Um, like I mentioned before, if you want to get into a little bit more depth of the scriptures, then you invest in a strong concordance, the original Torah, um, or a commentary will get you into deeper information, a history on the Feast of Trumpets and all the holy days, okay? And also, I would say to invest in the Book of Jubilee. The Book of Jubilee will give you the original calendar. That's why it's, it was reserved. The Book of Jubilee was given to Noah and his sons, and it was reserved for them to follow the days because God has set certain days in order for his people to reserve. So everything that, you know, was all the way down, you know, from the flood on down and his sons and, you know, and the tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes from Abraham, on down, they reserved these days. And it's important that those who are Hebrew Israelites understand these days, those who are part of the Christian belief should reserve these days. So unfortunately, um, we're not practicing them. And it's, it's very important that we, as we come into the knowledge of these days, they are still important that God sets them in place for us to reserve them forever. And um, like I say, I'm making an adjustment because it's important as a woman of God, I should be acknowledging his covenants and his holy days. And like I mentioned before, when you're ignorant of these days and you're not taught, then God understands that. But as you become more knowledgeable, you should make an adjustment with your life and acknowledge him in these holy cult, the holy days of his covenants. Okay, let's go on down to Feast of Trumpets. Follow me along with Old Testament, Leviticus 23rd chapter. And I'll read 23rd chapter and 23 and 25. Okay, reads Feast of Trumpets. And the Lord spanked unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, 
a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Let's go down to 25. You shall do, you shall do no service work therein, but you shall offer an offering made of fire unto the Lord. You know, back then they brought an offering of fire. I would say any offering brought before God, you know, whether it be in an offering before his priests, before his prophets, before his pastors, uh, whoever is a man or woman of God over you, um, who's reserving these days, you should acknowledge these days and bring that offering and mark it as I'm reserving the Feast of Trumpets on this certain day of the month of the year, according to the Holy Calendar. And bring it on to the man or woman of God. And just mark whatever envelope you have. Say, I'm Feast of Trumpets. I'm acknowledging. And, you know, if they're not reserving it, and if you, or you just, between you and the Lord. As people come into the kingdom and start re retraining themselves, relearning the truth. Because this is the truth. I can't argue with this what this book and the scriptures are theirs in Leviticus 23rd chapter, 23rd verse to 25. It is mandatory according to the Feast of Trumpets. He says to the Israelites, those who will be in Christ, who are in the covenant, who are in the way, who are in the word, are to reserve these covenants and these holy days. Okay, let's go on down to the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement was a day of fasting, repenting. And a day of known to the Jews, such as called Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur understood the day of atonement. Followed down in Leviticus 23rd chapter. Let's go to the 26th. Now, all the holy days are in the 23rd chapter. I'm following on the 23rd chapter. Of Leviticus and that God sets the holy days there as an order. Okay, so I'm gonna read 20, 23, 26 through 32. Day of Atonement. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Let's go on down to 32. You can you can afflict me, you know, such as fasting. Deny yourself something you're you are constantly engaging in. If it's food, pull away. If it's media, do it go on a media fast. Don't listen to any kind of music, uh pull away from the TV, the radio, anything that has to do with your ear gates. Pull away from that if it's if it, or if it's if you gotta have a coffee, leave the coffee, uh, energy drink, or if you just gotta have a, whatever habit you have that your soul is craving and you need to afflict it, you know, pull away, pull away, and fast on that. Um, let's go on down to uh, twenty-eight, and you shall do no work in that same day. For it, it's a day of atonement and made as, as a day for you before the Lord, your God. What is, we're going to follow on down to 32. For whatsoever, whatever soul it, it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whosoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among the people. See, this is what I'm saying. You're not gonna learn, if you don't read the Bible for yourself and understand the scripture for yourself, you, you, and depend on the, the readings from your shepherd, if they don't reserve this, you're gonna miss out. And, and you know, if you don't understand the scriptures or the Bible and you want to know, Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And he'll open up your spiritual sense where you can read and understand these, the, the book. Because God's book is a spiritual book. 
You should, we as believers shouldn't have to depend on a sh anyone to teach. You know, they're there to teach. Okay, the script, you know, a man or woman of God is raised up to teach you, to give you more edification. He raised up leaders to, to break down and give you this edification and understanding. But you should be able to read the scriptures for yourself because you're not going to always get it from someone else. So if God is saying, well, whosoever soul is be that shall not be afflicted in a fast, because you're afflicting yourself when you fast, in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among the people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation in all your dwellings. 32. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day. Of the of the month, in the ninth day of the month, at even from even until even, shall you celebrate your Sabbath. So, how many days of the Day of Atonement you afflict your soul? Fast. That's the sign of affliction. Fast. Study the scriptures. Bring an offering. Repent, and rest. Rest in the Lord. Okay, let's go on down to the Feast of Tabernacles. That starts in the, we're still in the book of Leviticus, 23rd chapter, 33rd verse, 33. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The 15th day of the seventh month, July 15th, shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. The feast of tabernacle, seven days celebration, it's a great fall harvest observed by living in temporary dwellings for a duration of the feast. Now, I'm going to keep going down and explain to you a bit more about why this was put in place. Let's go down to we're going to follow it all the way down to 43, 35. On the, on the first day shall be a holy convocation, and you shall do no service work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire, whatever offering you want to bring before the Lord that he will receive. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no service work therein. 37. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocation, in, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a service, drink offering, everything upon his day. Let's go on down to, we're going to get to 43. Besides the Sabbath of the Lord, and besides your gifts, besides all your vows, besides your free will offerings, which you give to the Lord, 39, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, it's July 15th, when you have gathered the first fruit in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days on the first day shall be a Sabbath and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath and you shall take you and excuse me and you shall take you on the first day that brought of goodly trees branches palms both brought of thick trees and willows of brooks and you shall rejoice before the Lord, your God, seven days. You shall keep it in a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generation. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. It shall dwell, you shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born unto born shall dwell in booths. 
Let me stop here for a minute. What these Israelites did, they had boots like in the desert as a significance before God to remind them of him bringing them through the wilderness. Now, this is like um, an analogy, a remembrance, a memorial to God of how he brought them through out of Egypt. They should dwell in tents and boots, but bring an offering seven days, and it shall begin in the 15th day of the seventh month, uh, according to the year of the, um, the, the Feast of Tabernacles, and it shall be reserved forever. And this is specifically instructed to the Israelites. It didn't say Gentiles, it said Israelites, those who are of the 12 tribes of Israel. Do you understand what I'm reading? Okay. Our Israelites born shall dwell in boots. They shall dwell in the wilderness in boots as a reminder of God bringing their forefathers through the wilderness and not forgetting what he had done for them. This is why God gives them remembrance because if you forget what someone does for you, it's it's sort of like losing gratitude gratefulness, being humbled, acknowledging that he is still who he is, a miracle worker, a provider, regardless if you have resources or not, God still is able to provide for you. So then he gives them instructions to reserve this, their Feast of Tabernacles forever. Okay, let's wrap it up. 43, that your generation may know that I made, see, the children of Israel, Israel to dwell in booths, when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. So it was a, it's a memorial based on how he brought their forefathers out of Egypt. They forefathers had no, they had no, no homes built out in the wilderness, out in the desert, out after coming through the Red Sea. They had, they made boops out of branches and trees or whatever. So he's telling their offspring of Israel, which are the 12 tribes, to remember these memorials, dwell in booths somewhere, and have, and let's go back to 40, and you shall take you on the day, first day that brought goodly trees, branches, and palms, and the brooks of the thick trees and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God. They had, this is what they made booths out of little portable boots out of because they didn't have any wood so they made them out of the trees and certain wood from the trees but it was not carved wood like houses so they made little portable boots out of the leaves in the in the um, certain trees and they dwelt there so god wants his children the remnant to acknowledge these days to remind them what their forefathers dwelt in the desert and the wilderness as god brought them out of bondage out of israel i mean out of egypt the house of bondage and took care of them. So this is why he has this in place. So they wouldn't forget. Let's go on to the last one. The last great day. The last great day. Adjusted to the Feast of Tabernacles. This eighth day is considered a separate feast. So Leviticus 23, 36, and 39. Leviticus 23, 36, and 39. Seven days. You shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day you shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, and it shall be a solemn assembly. And you shall do no service work. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, everything upon this day, besides the Sabbath of the Lord, and besides your gifts, and besides your vows, and besides your free will offerings which you give unto the Lord. 39. And in this 15th day of the seventh month, excuse me, when you have gathered in the first fruit of the land, fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days, and on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. 
That's what he's letting them know to remember and bring an offering, an extra offering besides your regular offerings and besides your regular uh, first fruits. He's saying bring a separate one. And this is in reference to the Feast of Tabernacles and the Day of Atonement. It's just to remind the children of Israel what God had did for their forefathers. So these days are put in place as a memorial for his people to reserve forever. Okay. I'm going to follow on down again. Um, this is what I was led to do today. The Holy Covenants. I'm the Holy Days. I'm going to go into the Covenants, which are very, very important. The Covenants, there's a lot of Covenants in the Old and New Testament. But there's a lot of Covenants we ought to be reserving. Me, myself as well, um, are, are very, very powerful and very important to God and to his people. Okay. According to the Book of Jubilees, page 43, I mean, 438. Now, the Book of Jubilee on 4, 448, in reference to the Holy Covenant God put in place regarding the eighth day of circumcision for the male Israelites. This is a holy covenant. And this is documented according to the book of Jubilee and noted in heaven that the Israelites are commanded to circumcise the male child eight days after eight days of birth to, to circumcise the male child as a separation from the other nations, indicating that they belong to God. When you belong to God, he always has some sort of shedding of blood somewhere, some sort of incision in the flesh, letting to distinguish you from the children of the sons of Belial. Meaning my sons of Belial mean what I'm saying, sons of the devil. Meaning they are, according to the book of Jubilee, to be left the way they are, uncut from birth. But if you be an offspring of the Most High, as an Israelite, and you bear a male child, you are required by God in a covenant to circumcise him on the eighth day. And that says to God that that child is mine. There's been a shedding of blood. There's been an incision in the flesh. He belongs to me. It has nothing to do with the heart. It, when I follow the scriptures and according to the book of Jubilee, it had it mentioned nothing about the heart. It mentioned about the shedding of blood, a cutting in the flesh, indicating that that's my offspring, that's my seed. That's not a child of Blau. That's not a child of the devil. That child is dedicated to me. So he commanded the Israelites to circumcise their children, their male children, on the eighth day and it is documented in heaven and noted that this has to be done or that child will be sort of considered an outcast like the uh, i won't say say an outcast but it'll be like the gentiles you can research for yourself and that is covenant with god children of god of the israelites versus children of Belial. Page 40, 438 through 440, page 33. You can read it yourself in the book of Jubilee that God has a command for the Israelites to circumcise all the male children. Okay, let's go down to the Abrahamic covenant. The Abrahamic covenant, let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 12, 1 and 4. Old Testament. Now I'm just highlighting on the covenants today uh, because it's important. As you read these covenants, I'm gonna tell you something. These covenants are noted in the in the in the in the archive. I would say archives of heaven, according to His chosen people, 
These are mandatory. Okay. God does not play around when it comes to the covenants. Okay. 12, 1, and 4. Right here. First one. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land in which I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Number four. Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Okay, this is sort of like a covenant he was establishing with God. Now I'm going to go down to one more. Let's jump over to 13. Let's go to Abraham and Covenant 13 chapter of Leviticus 14 verse 2 17. All right. Renewed of the gifts of the Canaan of Abram, of Abram and by God. 14. And the Lord has said unto Abram, after Lot was separated from him, lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it to thy seed forever and i will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall they thy seed also be numbered 17 last one arise walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it for i will give it unto thee When God makes a promise to you, he will always bring it to pass. He promised Abraham everything he told him he was going to do, and he brought it to pass. Now, I know a lot of us struggle when God tells you to do something, and you know it's him speaking to you, and you try to look for validation from man, but he didn't speak to them. It is not for you to listen to man to get a validation. If God gives you instruction to do something according to his will, you ought to move out on it and trust him because he's going to always bring it to pass in his due time. Trust him and believe. It's one thing God can't do. He will not lie. So everything he promised Abraham when Abraham entered into a covenant with him, God brought it to pass. Okay, let's get down to the next covenant. The Noahic covenant he established with Noah. Okay, we're still in Genesis. Go down to Genesis 9 chapter 1 and 4. I'm sorry, Genesis 9, 1 through 18. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth too. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all the moving upon the earth and upon all the fresh fish, fish of the sea into your land, into your hand are they delivered. So God put the beast into Noah's hand. Noah had power over a beast and his sons. Okay. Number three. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. But the fit, but the flesh with the life thereof, which is in the blood thereof shall you not eat. I say this. Anything that bleeds and is not drained out, we are not to eat. If you are part of a covenant with God, he told he told Noah this and his sons, anything with blood in it, we are not to eat it. Okay? Let's go down to five. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast. Will I require it? And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, 
while I require the life of man. Six, whoso sheddeth man's blood by man, shall his blood be shedded. For in the image of God made he man. And you, be ye fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you and with every living creature there is with you of the fowls of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you for all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth and i will establish my covenant with you neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth and god said this is the token of the covenant which i made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations i do set my bow in the cloud excuse me i do set my bow in the cloud so when you see the rainbow that's a sign that god's covenant is still in place 13. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall be, and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, and the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of the flesh, and the waters shall be no more over the flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look on it, and I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of the flesh that is upon the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all the flesh that is upon the earth. Which is a beautiful remembrance and significance that God puts a bow in the heavens and the skies for us to remember that he has made a promise. Okay, let's go to the Mosianic covenant commands, ordinances, and judgments. Let's go to the book of Exodus, 20th chapter. And these are still covenants and God is expecting us to, uh, I'm sorry, I gotta say it, keep. Okay, Exodus 20. 20 chapter, first verse, Old Testament. All right, let's start here. Okay, here we go. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, that thou shalt have no more gods before me. Thou shalt not make any thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath, so that it in it the waters or any under the water. That shall not bow down thyself. Thou shalt not bow thyself down neither shall thou serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me god visits the children of iniquity um that hate him for after three, three to four generations let me read that again thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. He visits those who hate him, and he judges those after up to the third and fourth generation. Okay? And showing mercy 
unto thousands of them. And this is the righteous he's talking about. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guilty that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the, unto the Lord. In it thou shalt do no work. Thou neither thy sons, nor thy daughters, nor thy maidservants, or men servants, nor any cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. Up to 18. For in the sixth day the Lord made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is therein it, and rested in seven days therein. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So Saturday is really the holy day according to the Jubilee Hebrew calendar. Um, it's really originally a holy day and it is a command. So I don't care what anyone say. It should be a day of rest. It should be a day of prayer. Um, if you want to fast, a day of studying and spending time with God. And that day is hallowed, as he just said, forever. So whatever they want to put in place Sunday, it is not what God put in place. Okay. Now, 12th verse, honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. This is what I'm saying about children being disrespectful to their father and mothers, their days will be cut off. You start disrespecting your parents, whoever God has given you, whatever they may be to you, you still have to honor them. So your days can be long on earth. Okay, now, 13, thou shalt not kill. These are the commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covenant thy neighbor's houses. House. Thou shalt not covenant thy neighbor's wife, nor his maid servant, manservant, or maid servants, nor his oxen, or his asses, or anything that that is thy neighbor's. Okay. Uh, let's go down one more. Eighteen. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noises of the tr of the trumpet. And the mountain sh smoked, and when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. This was God coming down to Mount Sinai, I guess, showing them after Moses gave them the co commandments of covenant, God was there in his presence, and this was a sign of his presence. Okay. Um, yeah, we can keep going if we want. That's because it goes down to 31. 31 and 8. Let's jump down to 31 and 8. Exodus 31, 8. And these are, like I said, they're holy covenants. And it's like a decree, it's like a command. Okay. These are all ordinances, covenants, ordinances, judgments, and commandments. This is a this is the ordinance right here. And the table and his furniture, and the pure candlestick with all of his furniture and the altars of incense. Okay, this is the tabernacle congregation. Of the ark and the testimony and the mercy seat and um that be upon it and all the furniture of the tabernacle they were to be anointed blessed and prayed over so that's that's the ordinances okay for the ministers for those who serve in god's house or temple this is a command for them to uh make sure that everything stays separate and sacred okay so let's go down uh, to the Devanic the, the, the Devan Covenant. And I'm going to read from 2 Samuel 7, 4 through 16. We're still in the Old Testament. So I'm going to read from 2 Samuel 
Samuel has two books. First Samuel is the second Samuel. So let's go to Second Samuel, uh, seventh chapter. Fourth verse. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus said the Lord, Shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in, whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day. So God's spirit, really, God's spirit obviously was tired. and need to rest on there. So it was a command that David built him a house, and Samuel the prophet was sent to him. Okay, let's keep going. But even, even to this day, and even have walked in the tent and in the tabernacle. Eighth verse, seventh verse. In all the places there, and I have walked with all the children of Israel, spanked I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I command to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye? not me a house of cedar there you have it there you have it god needed a place of his spirit to rest now therefore shall thou so shall thou say unto the servants of david thus says the lord of hosts i took thee from the sheep goat from the following the sheep to be ruler over my people of israel and i was with thee wherever thou wentest, and have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great man that are in the earth 10th verse moreover i will appoint a place of my people israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more they were wandering they needed a place to worship which is why god released them from the egyptians he wanted his people to worship them. okay Neither shall the children of the wicked afflict them any more as before time. 11th verse. And as since the time that I command judges to be over my people Israel, and I have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. 13, I mean 12. And when thy days be full, and thou shalt sleep, with thy fathers, I will set up my seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. We're talking about Solomon, because he was going to be born. He was going to be a man of hands with no blood, so clean enough to build God a house. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 14. And I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of man and with the stripes of the children of men. That was going to be Solomon. His responsibility was going to be to build God a house. King David was not allowed, but God was sending Samuel to tell him God wanted a house built so his spirit can rest in the earth. Okay? Because what was happening was everybody was being building, but God, you know, he needed a place to dwell so his people. His children and his tribes can come worship before him. All right, let's get down to the Abrahamic covenant, Genesis 3, 16 and 19. First book of the Old Testament. Genesis 3, 16 and 19. here okay praise the lord all right 16 unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrows and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee let's go down to 17 and unto adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten the of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. He cursed the ground as well. It's in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herbs and of the fields. 
Let's go down to 19. And in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust art thou, and unto dust shalt thou return. This was like a punishment, so to speak. But a covenant he made between Adam after he disobeyed God and listened to his wife. And he told them not to take of the fruit. But, you know, Adam was still right there waiting on her to take the first bite. And he took it. So, you know, repercussions comes with being disobedient. So the punishment for women was bearing children, pain in labor. And for men to labor until the ground and sweat hard labor because at one point the garden the ground was blessed where it just yield fruit it would yield its own it would do its everything for a man man would have would he didn't really have to, to till it the land was blessed so it just would like till itself it would just replenish itself right so you can just take partake of it but now it's the curses upon the earth so you have to go and till the ground if you want something to grow out of it you know and eat of it so that was a sign to him. Okay, so let's go to, we got three more to wrap up. The Edenic Covenant. We're still in Genesis, Genesis 1 through 16. This is the Edenic Covenant we were established in, 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 in Eden. Um, first chapter. Genesis 1, 26, Genesis 1, 26 to 31. All right, read 26. And God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them be dom have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him male and female created he them 28 and god blessed them and god said to them god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over it over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that removeth upon the earth and god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed and you in you it shall be for meat so the the meat was really the herbs and and, and the fruit of, of the trees that's what our meat was their meat was was given 30. And to every beast of the of the earth, to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth up on the earth, therein there it to life is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So it wasn't really man was was not created to eat meat at this time. He was not the meat was the fruit of the trees and the herbs of the ground. That was man's protein. Okay, so let's go to 31. And God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay, so um, there you have it. Now, that was the Edenic covenant. The land covenant, there is a land covenant. As I was researching and studying, I didn't know there was a land covenant, but there is a land covenant. So let's go down to the land covenant. Quote, unquote, they say it's a Palestine covenant. I don't know how they come up with Palestine covenant. That's in the Bible, but it doesn't say Palestine. It's a land covenant. Let's go to Deuteronomy 31 to 10, and it'll read about the land covenant. That's Deuteronomy, Old Testament. Follows right after uh, Numbers. Deuteronomy 30. And 10. Okay. Deuteronomy 30, 1 to 10. 
Promises and judgment will be renewed covenants. One reads as, and it shall come to pass when I, when all these things come upon thee, the blessings and the cursing, and I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind, make in remembrance among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God hath given driven thee, and thou shalt return to the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children and all thy heart, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that the Lord thy God will return thy captivity and have compassion on thee, and I will return and gather thee from all the nations, whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. Number four, if any thy be driven out unto the uttermost parts of the heavens, for thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land, here we go, which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. So that God established a land covenant, obviously in verse 5, according to our, their forefathers, as he gathered them back, after he sent them out in the exile, he gathered them back and made a covenant, a land covenant. Let's read from 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. See, this is the confusion of the circumcision of male versus the circumcision of heart. There's, there's two. He, he is highlighting the circumcision of the heart, but he also commands the circumcision of the male Hebrew children the eighth day. Okay, six verse. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed, meaning your son, your children, your daughters, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Seventh verse. And the Lord thy God will put all thy curses upon thy enemies and unto them that hate thee, which persecute thee. So they had enemies, according to the seventh verse, that persecuted them, such as we have today. Um, whatever curse they sent out against God's children was reversed. God took that curse and reversed it and sent it to their enemies and put it on them instead. Okay. Number... Eight, eight verse, and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all the commandments which I command thee this day. Number nine, and the Lord thy God will make thee a perpetual plenteous in every works of thy hands, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Lord will again return over thee for good as he rejoice over thy forefathers. 10th verse, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law. And if thou return unto the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So as he brought his people back into covenant with him because he sent them out of exile, once they disobeyed him, he brought them back. He established a covenant with them. A land covenant he blessed the land and he blessed them he circumcised their heart to as a covenant between them and god these were the offspring of the israelites and to start blessing them again and multiplying them they had a covenant a command but they had to return to him with their whole heart you can't be somewhere have your your heart somewhere else and then have it partial with god and you're not being fully de devoted and dedicated to him because if you didn't, you know, you didn't reap the benefits of the blessings because he knows the hearts. Okay, let's go down to the last one, which is the new covenant. Hallelujah. Uh, according to, let's go to the new covenant. Um, let's go to Hebrews 5, New Testament, and 9. It's Hebrews 5 and 9. Oh, right, turn right to Hebrews. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. Okay. Hebrews 5th chapter, 9th verse. And being made perfect, he became 
the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. That's the new covenant. And let's jump over to the new covenant for the New Testament believers. Let's go to Jeremiah 31 and 40. Old Testament again. Follow me along. Old prophet, major prophet. He's a major prophet. The book of Jeremiah, known as the weeping prophet. Now, Jeremiah was a powerful prophet sent to many nations he was a dedicated preacher though he preached the word in the middle of exile when the children of israel were disobeying god he still preached to them no matter what he stayed faithful okay now let's go to 31 he's really helping me today i'm right here thank you holy spirit okay 31 31 31 31 the new covenant prophesied by prophet jeremiah 31, behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke. He had to make a new one. Although... I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my new law in their inward parts to and write, excuse me, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. Let's go down to 40. And they shall teach no one every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, for the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. 35. Thus says the Lord, which giveth the sun for the light by day, and the ordinances of the moon, and of the stars for light by night, which divided the seas when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, says the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. This is what's happening. The division of the Israelites have taken place to this day. The 12 tribes are scattered, but a lot of them are not brought back to God in their inward part, in their hearts, in their spirit. So what's happening, according to this scripture, the Israelites shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. So what is he saying is, if there be a division among the 12 tribes, they won't be a nation. It took 12 tribes God established to make a nation. And once all the nations from the 12 tribes are gathered to him again in this final hour, final closing of the book of Revelations, 144,000 shall be gathered back to God. Then the nation will be established to God again. Okay. Now, let's go down to 37. Thus said the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched, out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, said the Lord. It's going down to 40. 38. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that the city shall be built to the Lord for the tower of Hananel unto the gates of the corners. And the measuring line shall yet go forth forever over against it upon the hills of Gareb and shall compass about to Goath. 40. And the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields unto the brooks of Kiron 
unto the corners of the horse gate towards the east shall be holy unto the Lord. It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down anymore forever. This is the house of Israel's land that God had established to them that he will has considered holy. Um, there's a measurement line and then there's a certain distance where he compass measured that ground was holy and reserved only for the Israelites. As he said, his people, Israel, only for them. It's gonna, it says, it shall be, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that the city shall be built to the Lord. It's gonna be a new city. It's gonna be established. So the new, the new kingdom, the new Jerusalem, it's gonna be established once God established his people back to him as a nation. Because right now we're not considered a nation because we're scattered. Some of us have left him, have deviated. And when he gathers his people back, according to the 12 tribes, according to the book of Revelations, 144,000, they will not cease to be in a nation. They will be a nation unto the Lord again, which is something to be looking forward towards. So that wraps it up today with the... Holy Calendar and God's Covenants. All spiritual significance important to the Most High. He is very, 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 um, very, shall I say, very focused on that we know these days and that we reserve these holy days and that we acknowledge his covenants because it's, it's documented, as I shall I say again, these are recorded in the heavenly archives in heaven that the Israelites are his chosen people, the 12 tribes um, made unto himself. He established a nation and they should preserve these days, these holy covenants according to the holy and the holy calendar forever. Okay. I hope I was a blessing to you again today. Um, until next time, I am Prophet Tammy Collins. Thank you for being in Bible study with me, or shall I say, um, scriptural study. It's been a blessing, and may the Lord continue to watch over you. Until next time, I spent a little bit longer today than I normally do, but I hope you had a revelation and an understanding of the Holy Calendar and of the covenants. May the Lord watch over you and bless you and your family in your comings and goings. Stay positive, stay focused on him, and stay close to him. Stay blessed. Until next time, God bless you.